good literacy resource would be something that instantly engages the children. It's got to be stimulating and suited to the child and their age group. I use a lot of um, puppets. Good practical activities, links. It's user friendly um, and it doesn't cause too much extra planning time or work. It's something that stimulates them, makes them think and knocks them off their normal parallel tracks of thinking. I really enjoy this book, Improving Story Writing by Alan Pete. It's really, really handy because he aims to kind of put his theory about how to get children to write stories, but at the same time it's very practical because it gives you um, ideas for activities that you can do in the classroom. It takes an alternate approach to getting children to write and I think it's basically very practical. It's good to read beforehand, but it, it, you can put a lot of the activities into practice, so I would highly recommend the book. The idea is, rather than just kind of teaching it to your own age group, if you start it as a whole school from year one, by the time they get to Key Stage 2, they already know the elements that make up a story and how to kind of get there, really. I like the story in the boxes. Basically, he tries to turn children away from thinking that there's a beginning, middle and an end. Um, and he tries to build it up so you're thinking about the senses and where it begins and the setting, the location, the characters. So it's just really good for helping the teacher to first of all understand how that works and then it just gives you handy activities to let children build to that. I think this book would be quite uh, useful for newly qualified or student teachers because it, it gives a general overview of what you should be thinking about in planning, writing, um, and editing and improving writing and it gives some good worksheets, some quite simple worksheets uh, which might help scaffold children's writing. But I think it would be less useful um, for a more experienced teacher. I think there's some really good ideas in there, especially for supporting teachers who aren't confident in teaching writing and just knowing what things you ought to be including in writing to get it to be the best writing it possibly can be. There's sensory ideas, just making descriptions using all the senses and that's been a really effective tool in getting some good writing. This is a kind of an interesting resource. I must say though that I don't think there's anything in here that even a moderately experienced teacher wouldn't know and wouldn't already own themselves. I also think it's somewhat outdated as these days we tend to use interactive whiteboards or data projectors and this really should be projectable. There's some nice games and things you can play. This is the Because game which I think is relating to evaluating a story, so a child's opinion of a story, which is quite nice. But then again, um, it's the only page that made me think, oh, that might be good to do with my children. It's um, quite broken down in its ideas of how, how to teach creative writing, and, and it gives me some good initial ideas to work on. What I don't particularly like about it is the fact that it's creative writing, and it's very uninspirational when you look at some of the, the worksheets and things for children to write on. It's um, got some nice examples here about um, maybe when you're writing about um, character descriptions. So they've got the idea of putting the picture of the character in the middle and then writing around the edges um, using adjectives, what the character was wearing, um, his personality, his suitcase, things like that, and just to spark off um, initial ideas for planning. In the classroom itself, it is really, really good for the photocopial pages. Um, but for me, myself, I use it more as a tool to kind of plan before I teach the lessons, and it's just really, really good, and it just it's built my confidence up a lot so I can put it into practice in the classrooms. One of my favourite literacy resources is a um, book of short stories by Kevin Crossley Hollands. It's called Short and they're very, very short stories within it so it's good for picking up if you just need to look at story openings, you just need to look at story beginnings or story endings. I think this is a brilliant resource. It's a digital microphone. It's very, very easy to use and the kids love it. All you need to know is that the red button is for record, the green button plays, you don't need any batteries or software, you can plug it straight into the computer and you can upload your files and listen to them. We've had really good results for literacy as it gives the children an opportunity to gain confidence and be more and more expressive. This is my resource from home, this is my suitcase. I use this in literacy for imaginative writing and descriptive writing as a stimulus. The children create some fantastic pieces of writing from this, questioning what's inside it and it's absolutely fun to use.
Piano is a, an animation on the DCSF website. It's a three minute animation and it's uh, of an old man who sat at a piano playing a, a familiar tune. And as he plays the piano, memories of his past come back to him. On the website there are lesson plans that run over three weeks that teachers can use to structure their teaching. It's a quite a good starting point for literacy because obviously it's different to a text or a picture so it's something different for the children so they're quite engaged in it. It's engaging for both boys and girls equally, they both find it stimulating. Because it's an animation it appeals obviously to all styles of learners, visual, auditory, kinesthetic learners. We start off by just watching it with the children the first time and getting their initial impressions of, of the piece of music and the animation. Um, and then we start to delve deeper. And every time they watch it, they get something else from the piece of music, from the animation. It could be used for you know, a whole range of children, I think, um, across Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. And their kind of understanding and what they got from the animation would just you know, be a different level. Often at the end of Year 5, when we finish the piece of work, they turn around and say that, you know, that was the best piece of work that they've done. Some of the pieces of writing they do after it are, are you know, amazing. I absolutely love the piano piece. I've used it several times and every time I've used it I've really enjoyed it and the kids have loved it. I love the fact there's no speaking so they can interpret it, what they think is happening, what the characters are feeling. It enables us to produce really ambitious vocabulary that then they're really confident using. And there's also a mood graph that you can use with it which then enables them to sequence events of the film and think about their mood at the same time. Actually I could see it being used for a cross curricular as well because you could there's some history links in there and there's some PSHE links in there. Um, so sort of to do with the relationships and science growing up because it was him and as a boy before. So yeah, it was a really good piece. Children tend to say I'm either happy or sad um, and this raises a whole new set of emotions where you can talk about him feeling, you know, anxious because of the war and lost because of, you know, his dead wife. We found that as a film, some of the ideas in it were quite complicated for our children to actually grasp and understand, which made teaching the unit quite difficult. Um, and then actually once they did understand it, it was actually almost to an adult level for the children to understand. There's nothing set in stone about it. There's, um, it's very open-ended and the children can see that their stories don't necessarily need to be concrete. They can be open-ended like this film. Certainly when I watch it, it makes me feel all goosebumpy and that's the comment the children have made as well, that it makes them feel like they're there with the old man at his piano. <laughs> OK, a pair of boxes. Um... <laughs> I honestly don't know how I'd use this literacy. Any particular year group or...? There's a story called Someone Stole My Underpants, it could be to do with that. And the reason I use this for literacy is to show how to blend sound. So what I'll do, start with the first sound, k, put that in there, r, there, and then we blend, the blend comes out at the bottom. Oh, fantastic, that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah, for teaching phonics. I suppose you could, yeah. I'm not entirely sure it's something I would do, but I think it's quite an ingenious idea. And of course that's going to grab the attention of the children, isn't it? Because it's a bit naughty. Talk for Writing is one of the new strategies on the National Strategies website, which focuses on the importance of speaking and listening before children do any writing. I think Talk for Writing is a fantastic strategy not just myself, every member of staff has taken it with both hands and really used it to implement in planning. The Talk for Writing booklet comes with a DVD with two discs, but anything on the, in that pack and on that DVD is also replicated on the internet. It's split up into a number of areas. You've got book talk, writer talk, storytelling and story making, word and language games, and role play and drama. And on the website, you can click on 
any of these and it will navigate you to lots of um, examples of what you can use within your own teaching. And there's a number of videos on the DVD of clips of Pi Corbett doing training for literacy strategy managers and teachers which we can then adapt to fit into our teaching. I'm at the edge of the river and I've got to get to the other side. How am I going to get across? Somebody give me some ideas. I could swim, yes, keep going. I could use a pogo stick. Quick, in twos and threes, I need some creative, imaginative ways of getting across the river. Let's have some ideas. You've got one minute. Ready, steady, go. Any morning we can start the game with one of Pi Corbett's word and language games and straight away they know exactly what I'm asking them to do and they will speak in a full sentence confidently. The difference in the children in their speaking and listening in my class is just phenomenal. I think it's quite a useful tool. There's quite a few links there to different games and things to support the learning or as starter activities for the children to warm up into the um, speaking and listening. So, for example, there was a year four activity on um, you know, keywords and things that they might use. So those things are all there to support the teacher rather than having to come up with the ideas themselves. They're quite useful. There's lots of different activities and resources in this publication and it links very nicely with philosophy for children. So trying to create deeper thinking within children, getting them to ask really um, structured questions, and form really um, extensive answers. It's getting children to actually think about, imagine, and make up anything that they can or anything they want. And what Talk for Writing does is get children to verbalise, to get children to start talking, get children to actually hear, hear how a story is told, get children to actually tell a story or repeat a story. It's absolutely jam-packed with information, so it's something I think that you need quite a long while to actually get your head around. It's got links to objectives, which is something that when you're planning, especially from scratch, you need to know what, where the links are, and it's extremely clear and it links to the framework, so it's fantastic for that. Um, I think it's important that you do get training before you actually go and try and use the material, because there's so much of it. You would need to know what you're looking for in order to you know, get the best out of that of the website. Once you know what material it is you're looking for and you eventually find it, it is a good resource.